Hey everyone, Port ISM, welcome to part 5 of my car modeling technique guide revisited. Today we're going to deal with clear coat. So we're already on part 5, I'm absolutely flying through this build. Um, decals and wash were done in the last episode, they've been left for a good 24 hours. And we're back for clear coat. So as you know, my clear coat of choice is 2K clear coat from Gravity. I've used many over the years, but 2K has proved the most reliable for me on decals, on the finish, on the ease of use. Just everything across the board, 2K has proved more reliable than anything else. But there are safety implications with 2K. So you are spraying basically airborne superglue. It's an isocyrillate in it. Um, you need to pay attention to some safety precautions. And something that annoys me throughout the modeling world is a lot of people in videos don't talk about the safety implications of 2K. And it's very, very important. It can seriously affect your health. And when I say it that way, day-to-day -day use. Um, there are a lot of regulations on spray boots that need to be um, in full giant spray boost on a full scale car, air fed masks, full suits, the lot. There's a lot of safety implications to be aware of. Um, for our hobby, if you're 2K in once a month or what have you, as long as you take basic precautions, like I'm gonna explain in a minute, with the best respirator you can possibly buy, nitrile gloves, and I would st stress nitrile gloves. They are more impervious than vinyl and uh, latex. A good extractor is key. Ventilation, leaving the room when you're done, keeping as much skin as you can covered and your eyes as well, and leave the room when the 2K is done. Don't sit in the room at off gases. Vacate the room for an hour or two, let it off gas, and then come back and have a look. Doing that occasionally is not going to have any real substantial effects on your life at all. Um, but if you're spraying it with no skin protection, no respirator on, no booth, or you're sitting in the room afterwards, you're asking for trouble. And I know it can cause serious respiratory problems um, and lots of other nasty things. So please heed these warnings. Uh, respirators aren't expensive to buy. Replace your filters regularly. Replace the filters in your spray booth regularly. And please put proper PPE on. Take your time, do it properly, and everything will be fine. I've been using this for about four years now. I've only had one nasty experience with it, and it's when I've stayed in the room after using it because I'm an idiot and I've learned that lesson. Never do that again. Uh, so, like I say, please pay attention. If you want to read about it, go online. There's a lot of scare stories online. For us, using it once or twice a month, if even that for some people, it's not going to pose any real risks for you. Uh, like I say, follow my basic safety guide and you'll be fine. But please be in no doubt, this is a dangerous chemical. And if you're not happy using it, pick another clear coat of your choice. You've got lacquer based clears from the likes of Mr. Hobby and they're super clear, which is available in clear pots and sprays. Beautiful. You've got LP9 from Tammy or X22 if you don't want to go the lacquer route. They spray great. Uh, there's lots of clear options out there. You can get water based like Alclad Aqua Gloss, Windsor and Newton's clear as well. Bear in mind they all have their downsides as well. The lacquer clears because they're much thinner, they're very hot, so you stand a chance of ruining your decals. The water based clears take a bit of a knack to spray to get the best out of them. And you're going to have to have a lot more elbow grease to get a high shine from it and more patient spraying them. So there's pluses and minuses to them all. For me, the 2K is the top tier, easiest to use with the best results. And for me, that's why I use it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's jump straight in and let's go and do this 2K job. Right then, it's been 20, over 24 hours since we did our decals and panel line wash. So now we're gonna clear coat it. So my favorite clear coat of choice is Gravity Colors 2K clear coat. It's a two pack clear coat. Um, we've already talked about the danger implications about this, I'm not going to go over it again, but I have my Benchvent A300S booth with my custom surround made with my custom lights. We have a Scott full face respirator 
we've got some nitrile gloves, we've got our water spray, we've got our 2k itself, some 25ml medicine grade cups, some pipettes and some 190 micron paint trainers. I've also got my plastic really useful box which I've drilled some holes in both sides and put some mesh on to allow uh, parts to off gas inside as you can see. Uh, it has a drop down front on it which makes using it so much easier on here. I used to use a, a box I'd lift up and over. This makes life so much easier. We've got the model in there. It is ready for clear coat. It is attached to the Tamiya stand and held on by some masking tape so nice and secure. Um, and like I say, we've got the Scott full face respirator. Not cheap, but probably the best one I can get to protect me against a two pack clear coat. Um, it's got a massive filter on it. Full face for my eyes protected. And it's very, very good. It's a bit over the top by the look of it. But with this stuff, I don't think you can take too many precautions. The best next one up in this would be an air fed mask. But I don't have the funds for that. Nitrile gloves. These are more impervious to 2K than vinyl or latex. So I would recommend it. My left hand is always double gloved. Just to make sure. We've got a fresh filter in the booth. The booth is already running to extract any dust in there. Um... And we've got clean kitchen paper. Everything's been taken out the spray booth that's normally in there. It's all been wiped down. We put fresh kitchen paper in hours before we've done this. And we are ready for clear coat. So pay attention. Preparation is key, as I keep saying. And pay attention to those safety implications. Like I say, our full face respirator. We've got a water spray with tap water in. And we're going to spray all the kitchen paper wet. That way anything lands on this, any dust or particles... It will stay there and not take off again uh, airborne. And hopefully that will reduce the amount of dust that's in the atmosphere. Dust is our enemy on this. It doesn't do us any favours at all. And like I say, my choice of clear coat is Gravity Spain's uh, 2K Clear. This is a 3 to 1 to 1 mix. So we're going to do two mixes. One for the tack coat and the first wet coat. So the first mix is 4 millilitres of clear. So there's four parts, and then it's one part of each. So if you do the mathematics, it works out at 1.3 mil of activator and 1.3 mil of thinner. So we've got some medical medical grade pipettes as well. So we know that they're very precise. Uh, we're going to grab 1.3 mil of activator first. <clears throat> there we go. Pop that in with the clear. Get everything we can out of that um, pipette. Now, I normally do mix this now, and I absolutely forgot this time. You'll see me do it on the second one, but I normally start mixing this to get the chemical reaction together. I was told that's the best way to do it, but I've done it both ways. Put the uh, thinner in and then mixed it, and it's never had any adverse effects. So, up to you which way you do it, but I do normally mix the activator with the clear first, and then we're going to put in 1.3 mil of the thinner and mix it together and that's it You've got the activator and the thinner and that's a two-part clear coat mixed together so if you're doing two mil three mil whatever work it out into thirds and that's how you work out uh, how much you're going to need so an obvious one is three mil of clear one mil of hardener or activator and one mil of thinner but i want a little bit more because we're going to get our tack coat and first wet coat with this and then for the last coat i was recommended by a viewer mike who's probably going to watch this, I hope so anyway, uh, on my last coat to mix a fresh batch of 2K, and it's been working very well recently. Now, don't use the pipettes. Don't put the hard pipette in the thinner, um, because you'll ruin your thinner, and throw the pipettes. Once they're used, that's it, they're done. Now, I'm assured by gravity that I don't need to strain their paint, but I've always done it, and I always will do it. So we're straining this for a 190 micron uh, paint strainer. That way, any imp impurities, which there never is, or dry bits of paint, which is the main reason I do it, or hardener or activator, is caught in the micron filter. And that way we know we're spraying perfectly clear 2K. Airbrush of choice for this is the Iwata Revolution. This is the 0.3mm needle. Um, I only just recently started using this and definitely find it more beneficial. Puts out a finer mist of spray. It's a nice airbrush for around the £100 mark. Not bad at all. Apex from UMP. Very good. Another one of my favourite airbrushes. But I have gone back to my uh, eye waters more and more lately. We've got Tamiya's anti-static brush. I'm just going to give the model a wipe over. To get rid of any dust that's already on there. 
quick inspection around to make sure there's no nothing nasty stuck to it anywhere. And there we go. Go over it again. Like I say, dust is our enemy here. We want to make sure we keep this as dust free as possible. So we want to get our paint coats down as quick as we can. Give it a blow over with some air as well. Put your colour cup lid on as well. And then we're going to put our tack coat down. Now I'm going to show this its entirety. I'm going to pop it in and out with music as we go. But the first tack coat is basically just a light coat of the clear all over. We're not even trying to get it glossy in any way, shape or form. We're going to angle the model to the light so we can see the paint going down. And we're just going to put a even tack coat all over. Now this does two things. Number one, it puts a light coat of the clear down of the decals rather than just shocking them with a full wet coat. And it also gives us a tack coat, hence the name. So this will dry or flash off in about 10 minutes, which is why we leave it 10 minutes between coats. It will become unbelievably sticky, as you will figure out later when you start feeling your gloves after spraying this stuff. And when we come with our wetter coats, that allows the wet coats to stick to the model more and lessens the chances of us getting a run in the clear. So it serves two purposes. One, to protect the decals a bit. And more importantly, stops us getting runs. Now, if you hose the stuff on, you're still going to get runs. It isn't a guarantee, but it does lessen the risk if you apply it all properly. And as we're painting, make sure you pay attention to the wheel arches. Getting there, all the lower sills, rear bumpers, my happy, all those nooks and crannies. Like I say, you don't need to go mad. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Just make sure it's a nice, even coat all over. Uh, like I say, angle it to the light and you'll see it. So you can see there, you can see the mat of the bonnet and the slight gloss of the clear coat going on. Overlap it between coats as well. That is key with 2K. And as you can see, we're going on and off the airbrush, on and off the air on each pass. That way we go off, nothing gets splattered on. And before we come on, we're hitting the air. And if there's anything on the end of the airbrush, it will blow off before we go over the model. So, like I say, it's not the hardest thing to use. A lot of people put off by 2K because of the safety implications, which we've already gone through. And I understand that. But if you take the uh, precautions with the proper respirator, get as good as you can. Covering your skin up is vital. You can see I've got my gloves on. I've got some cling film on my left arm as well. It's my kind of, uh, yes, makeshift arm cover, I suppose it is, sleeve. But it does the job. But the respirator is important. The extract is very important. Uh, make sure you're not doing this in the room of any pets or family or friends or what have you. And make sure you leave the room when you're done. Don't sit in the room while it off-gasses. Um, it's not good for you, this stuff, at all. And Obviously, if you don't want to use it, you can use other clear coats. I do show using rattle cans in my RX-7 video, which is linked in the description down below. Um, and you can use other lacquer-based clears should you want as well. All I'd say, bear in mind, is the more thinner there is in the clear, and there's only, well, not even 30%, about 30% in this, is it? Um, most clears, lacquer base, will need about 60%, and the more thinner there is in there, the more chance you have of melting decals. It's happened to me, which is why I prefer 2K. It is the safer option for me on the model. It's a more guaranteed... Um, finish if that makes sense once we're done the main body that is put back in that plastic case and the door shut and we're on to the smaller parts exactly the same as before we give them a dust over with a brush to get them done now on these parts i would go from small medium to large i've done it the other way around here i've gone medium first i do the smaller parts first so the mirrors for me then it should be the spoiler, then the bumper, because you're trying to limit the amount of dust that lands. Obviously, the bigger parts stand more of a chance of getting dust on them. And again, we're going tack coat. Nothing too crazy. Just enough to get a nice coat down. And then that's popped in the case as well. Out of the way. And then onto the mirrors. And again, because the small parts, be careful they're not flooded. It's very easy to flood smaller components. So obviously that's the worst thing we can do. We don't want runs. We do not want orange peel or runs. And that is a fine line between not putting enough down. If you get an orange peel, 
you've not put enough clear coat down. If you're getting runs, i.e. you can see big pools of clear coat or runs of it running down the body, you put too much on. And the only way you're going to get good at doing that is by doing it. The more you do it, the more you'll see. But I have a lot of technique on the last coat, which has given me much better finishes lately, minimising the risk of runs and no orange peel at all. So there's many techniques for doing this. We are still doing the one tack coat and two gloss coats. I'm just putting lighter gloss coats on at the end, which kind of makes it four coats. You'll see at the end what I mean. Ten minutes has elapsed. We are now going to put our first wet coat on. So we're not going to hose the model down. We're not trying to get full coverage in one go. What we are going to do, though, is open the airbrush up a little bit more. We're going to have slower passes, as you can see. Uh, we're just coming back from the uh, model just a little bit more. Let the airbrush atomize its paint to get a wider pattern. Make sure we get the overlap in the clear. And keep those nice slow passes until we get a nice even coat. And like I say, we're not trying to get um, a perfect clear coat. We're just trying to get enough down to give us a nice start to our gloss finish. So it should get a bit more of a sheen this time. Like I say, slow the airbrush down. And do nice passes, overlap. So where your wet coat ends, just go over it a little bit more on your second pass. And just go around all the model until you've got a nice, even coat all over.
Right then, so 10 minutes has elapsed. We've cleaned out the airbrush totally. Rinsed it through with cellulose thinner, lacquer thinner, and we're going to mix some new 2K clear. The old 2K that was left, there's only a little bit, has been thrown away. And we're going to do a 4ml, 1.3ml, 1.3ml mix. Again, exactly what we did at the beginning. So 4ml of the clear, and 1.3ml of activator, and then 1.3ml of thinner. Exactly the same. Now, the idea of this is, because the clear has been sat around for like 25 minutes now, it's going to start to go off. So... If we mix a new batch again, we're going to get a more, well, a better finish in the 2K. And I can see the reasoning behind that. So our formula clears in there, 1.3 mil of activator. We're just emptying all the pipette out. And this is how I normally do it. We stir the activator and the clear together to get that chemical reaction going. Because this stuff doesn't dry, it cures. It's a chemical reaction between the hardener, the activator, and the clear coat itself. Once we've done that, we grab the 1.3 mil of the uh, thinner, mix it together, we'll, uh, strain it again, and job done. Now, another thing to remember here, as well as the safety implications, is the drying times. Now, this stuff needs to be kept over 15 degrees C to dry properly. If it's a bit warmer, it'll dry quicker. A lot of people put them in um, dehydrators. I've done it, I've had mixed results of really good results and cracked decals. So I don't want to risk the clear coat ruining everything. My cave is usually around the 20 degrees centigrade, although it is Baltically cold in the UK at the minute. Um, and it was around 14 this morning when I came out here. So made sure the heat's been on all day and it's currently 23. Now, I am told with 2K, it is dust dry within an hour. Touch dry within 24 hours and fully cured in 48. I like to give it a lot longer than that. So it's up to you how long you give it. But I tend to give mine about five days before I even touch it. Um, just to make sure. Now this is our third coat. We're going to put four down. But I'm only going to class it as three. Because this is basically the same as the second coat again. I'm not trying to get full coverage. I'm just doing an even pass. Exactly like we did on the second pass. I'm not even looking to see if we're getting it glossy. I'm just giving it a nice second coat. Evenly all over. Concentrate more on coverage and getting that overlap. Pay attention to the bottom of the sills and the bumpers and the wheel arches and that as well. And we'll just work our way around until we've got another nice even coat all over.
So as you saw, we did all the spoiler and bumpers and mirrors as well. They went back in. We got the body back out, let it all self-level for a couple of minutes while we do the smaller parts. And then we're going to have a look and we're going to apply, hopefully, the final coat. So we got a little bit faster, but we're just getting coverage all over with a fine mist spray. And what I'll do is we'll go all over. I'm just checking everywhere else. I'm using the light as an angle to make sure we get even coverage. And we'll put down another coat roughly about the same as the second one. And then we'll leave it for a second, have a look around it, let it self-level. And if anywhere needs a little bit more, we'll give it a bit more. And how do you know if it needs more? Well, if you can see any orange peel, it needs a little bit more clear. If you can't, it doesn't. It doesn't get any simpler than that. It is just how it is. So you can see on the boot lid, we've got a touch of orange peel. It's not quite optically clear, whereas the roof is a lot better. So you can see orange peel. It looks like dimples in the paint. So it's not quite optically clear. So to get rid of that, we need a little bit more of the 2K on there. That way it'll self-level and become super glossy. That's the way to know if it's working. And we're just going to work our way around nice and slow. Paying attention, looking at all the edges. One place I tend to miss is the A, B, and C pillars. The B pillars aren't a bother on this. They're behind the glass. And the front and back edges of the roof are areas I always miss for some reason. Um, so be particular and go around the entire model and have a good look. The light is your friend here. Give it an angle towards the light. If you can see any imperfections in the clear, put a little bit more clear down. You can push this quite far, this stuff, before it will run. But it is still a fine line. And when it does it, you're kind of in trouble. So there we go. We've got a nice even coat all over. I'm just having a little look using the light, angling it all, checking all those bumpers, all the edges, everywhere. Just looking for orange peel. And if you see a little bit, just put a little bit more of a mist over. I've spotted a hair in the bonnet. So I'm going to very carefully try and grab it out without touching the bonnet if I can. It's sticking right out and my decal tweezers won't grab it. So be very careful if you're doing this. I get more precise ones now and these get it. You don't want to be touching the 2K now. If the tweezers touch it, it's not the end of the world because it will self-level back in. So I'm just trying to grab that hair. And there we go. We got rid of it. And there we go. Like I say, let it self-level. Have a look around. You don't want to see any imperfections in the clear like i say i can't stress enough if you can see orange peel it's how it's going to dry how you see it now is how it's going to dry and i can just see a touch on the bonnet so i'm going to put a very fine mist over until i'm happy that it's gone it should be like glass when it's like this because as i say as you see it now is how it will dry so if there's any orange peel it's going to be where uh, when you dry. So you want to get rid of it now. Like I say, don't go too heavy handed on the airbrush. Just do a fine mist. You can always put a little bit more down in a second if you need to. Because you do not want to get a run. But you can see that super gloss finish I have there. Now bear in mind, this is stickier than sticky. And soaking wet with clear. So if you touch this or hit the plastic box and you put it in. You're going to put a huge mark in the 2K. This now needs to sit and cure and self-level and harden all by itself without any hindrance. And you'll get a beautiful clear coat every time. It is this simple to use. And like I say, you can use other clears. I've had fantastic clear uh, finishes with the spray can Mr. Hobby Super Clear. If you look at my RX-7 build, I got a great finish off that. But out the airbrush, nothing will be 2K. A lot of people complain, goes, oh, it looks toy-like and it doesn't look real. That's where, when it's dry, if you flat it all back and polish it up, you can lose that thickness and it will look absolutely phenomenal. So don't listen to those people who say it looks toy-like. Let it cure, flat it back properly, polish it up, and it will look fantastic. Um, but there we go. That is it. Um, just checking all the small bits, as I say. Making sure it's good. Now, I did this last night at about 7 p.m. I left my cave. Uh, came back about half 10 to check on it. Um, and I've got some pictures of it in a minute just to uh, show what it looked like about three hours later. 
Um, and all I'm doing now is I'm going around all the parts and literally visually inspecting every corner of them to check for orange peel. Because the better job you do now, the less work you've got to do later. And there you go, look, just put a little bit more down on that front bumper. The less work you've got polishing it, you're making your life a lot easier. So there we go. That body's back in the box. And me being me, I put these back in. And there we go. The body comes out for another look. So this has just been 2K. This is literally how it is. And it will still self-level more as it dries. But this is my final inspection before I commit to cleaning out the airbrush. And as you can see, I am looking at every square centimeter of that body to make sure that everywhere is perfect. And yeah, you do not be dropping this. And this is about three hours later. So the 2K is still curing. It's just how it is. Beautiful though, absolutely stunning. Once this is flattered back and polished, this thing's going to look phenomenal. Um, we've got nice even 2K everywhere. Nice gloss finish. You can see it on the black, how good it is. It's a beautiful finish. Very, very nice. The blue looks absolutely stunning. It really does. And then this is the next day. This is this morning. I just uh, opened up the booth and have a look. And look at that. It's fully self-leveled. And it's really started to cure. And look at that 2K. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful clear coat. Absolutely fabulous. Really is. Very happy with that one. Beautiful scheme as well. Of course, it's still delicate now. It's not fully cured. It's not been 24 hours. So if you have a look, I'm just checking it and showing it to you lot on camera. It'll go back in that case and it's left. Please also make sure anything you store it in does have some ventilation holes, let it off gas and leave it alone and let it fully cure. There we are then. She's done. Absolutely beautiful. She looks absolutely fantastic. We've done the best we possibly could on the clear coat. I think my technique on that third coat of doing two lighter coats rather than one heavy coat is working a lot better for me. I am getting much higher quality 2K clear coats doing it that way. It's not as thick as it used to be. I'm getting no runs at all, no orange peel at all, and it's just working great. I also think Mike, thank you Mike, Mike for the tip, suggesting of mixing a fresh 2K batch for the last coat is definitely giving me an optically clearer 2K as well. So thank you for that tip, Mike, as well. Now, we've inspected it. We've checked it. It's all fine. It's currently back up there, drying out. It's out the booth. Still in its box. Safe, drying. We'll leave that for at least five days. I normally get all the running gear done, the interior done, wheels, lights, everything ready for final assembly and leave that alone. And by the time I get around to that, because I'm normally filming three projects at once, it can be easily two or three weeks, and that is loads of time for that to clear. I've polished it, flattened it back, polished it after five days, and it's still been fine. But in my opinion, the longer the lever, the better you can. Please make sure your temperature stays above 15C in the room. You're keeping it. That would be what? Uh, 15C, so double it 30, about 60 Fahrenheit, roughly. Keep it above uh, 30 C, uh, 15C, 60 Fahrenheit, and it will cure properly. It's a recommendation for most 2Ks. Um, and then we've got clear coat. Now, you don't have to use modeling specific 2Ks, you can use automotive because that's essentially what these are at the end of the day. Um, I've tried all sorts. You can pr try Pro Range, which you get for £20. That should be linked in my products I use in my videos. There's a whole host of them, but I would test them on a spare model or spoons first of all to get used to it. Pro range is good and cheap, but it's nowhere as optically clear as this gravity. This is a much higher quality clear coat, and that's a recommendation. The only one I wouldn't use out of all the clear coats I talked about earlier is Tamiya TS13. It is unbelievably hot and will eat paint and decals if you're not careful. So be very careful using that clear coat. But like I say, listen to the safety warnings at the beginning. The other options you can use are there as well. There's many out there. Loads of automotive base clears as well. Use what you feel comfortable using. And most of all, have fun doing it. That's the idea of this hobby. So there we go. That's our clear coat done. We're going to let that dry now, cure all by itself while we're working on the parts of the model. 
and we'll come back later on and get it all polished up, flat it back, polished up to a nice high shine. So there we go. As always, you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon me down below, a Buy Me Coffee and a PayPal me link as well. You can get loads of perks on the Patreon, early access, exclusive videos, a supporter group, a supporter chat, monthly support, a live stream. And there's all links in the description for everything from the RX-7 build using spray cans, the original Technique series on the Subaru Impreza, so you can go back and look at those. And there's links to all sorts, all the products I use, all the group build, my private modeling page, everything is down there. Please make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, click that bell notification, and leave a comment. Love reading all your comments on the videos, it really spurs me along. And uh, there we go, thanks for watching today, enjoy the rest of the day everyone, take care, bye bye.